today I wanted to make a video that I've never really done before. The natural ecosphere, the first ecosphere I made, is now over one and a half years old. I thought it would be fun to look at how seasonal changes influence life in the ecosphere. Here you can see the ecosphere during its first winter. There's pretty much no algae on the glass and the amount of ostracods is big. It was also during the winter that the first planaria showed up. Now we entered spring. As you can see, the glass is brown. That is because it is covered in algae. Around this time, the days were getting longer. So there was more light hitting the ecosphere every day than during winter. This allowed the algae to grow more. You may also notice that there are a lot of clam shrimp swimming around. The longer days and warmer environment may have triggered dormant eggs to hatch or it may have triggered the adult clam shrimp that were in the ecosphere to breed. Whatever the cause, during this time the ecosystem had more energy to support all these new creatures. The amount of ostracods seemed stable. That was pretty much the biggest change that occurred as the days got longer and the temperature higher. So, now we've entered summer. The amount of algae on the glass has increased even more due to the longer days. Maybe even more noticeable is the big increase of hair algae on the leaf in the ecosphere. This is probably due to the same reasons as the other algae. Interestingly enough, the huge clam shrimp bloom had disappeared again. However, this time it were the bladder snails that really hit it off. They were getting a lot of babies. It could be that the temperatures were getting too high for the clam shrimp. Since bladder snails are absolute super animals and can live in pretty much every environment, this shouldn't have been a problem for them. With the competition of the clam shrimp gone, the snails had all this sunny gloriousness for themselves. Before you know it, a year has passed and it's winter again. The first thing you'll hopefully notice is that the algae on the glass has pretty much all disappeared again. It's very likely that that happened because of the shorter days and the lower amount of light. During the first winter there was no algae on the glass. Now it's winter again and again the algae on the glass went away. It's amazing to experience that. While the seasons change, the ecosphere changes along and that both times during winter the ecosphere looked very similar. So it would seem that the seasonal environment does have an influence on the ecosystem in the ecosphere. This time around there was way more string algae than last winter. However, it doesn't look as good as it did during the hotter months. So it would seem that the lack of light did take its toll. So let's take a look at some crispy fresh new footage. This was filmed during late summer this year. This is also a one and a half year update in disguise. Just like last year around this time, there is algae growing on the glass. The bladder snails are doing well. That's not really all that new, however, just like last year, they did have a small rise in offspring. Interestingly enough, we seem to have a new, never seen before species of ostracod in this ecosphere, which is honestly really surprising after well over a year. Something must have changed in the conditions of this jar which allowed for the presumably dormant eggs of this species to hatch and flourish. Very interesting. Now, the planaria had disappeared last year after spring. So it's somewhat surprising to see them appearing this summer. It probably has to do with some conditions or whatever. I don't know everything. Let's just appreciate these beautiful creatures for what they are and then I'll shut up for a minute. Look at this, 
it's a load of failed shots. Amazing how far technology has come, isn't it? To capture this. Here we have some very interesting behavior in the animal kingdom. Look at this and pay close attention. You will be witnessing a phenomenon that is known as the Planarian Express. This is an ostracot that is too lazy to get to the other side of the ecosphere on its own. So it hails a planaria and goes along for a ride. Very little is known about the benefits this has for the planaria. It is uncertain if the planaria receives some kind of payment for the service he is providing. If the planaria receives nothing, this could be considered as parasitism. The ostracot benefits and the planaria suffers due to the increased amount of energy required for the extra weight. This is the ostracot stop, so here it gets off. The other ostracot wanted to catch the planarian express as well. However, it was late and the Planarian Express sailed along. I hope this has given you a little bit of an insight into how these closed ecosystems you keep at home are influenced by the seasonal changes outside. And hopefully your hunger for updates on this ecosphere has been stilled for now. I would like to thank June Kang and the 41 other Life in Jars patrons for their generous support. And I would like to thank you for watching. So, I'll do that now. Thanks for watching.